Now remember that when we talk, talked about force, originally we were talking about one charge exerting a force directly on another charge. But then we thought of a new way of dealing with it, which we had a middleman. We thought of one charge creating a field that then exerted the force. So there was a middleman between the charge and the force. Well, what we've done so far is we've been thinking about the charges interacting with each other directly. But now again, we're going to introduce a middleman concept. Now, instead of going straight from the charges to the energy, we're going to figure out the potential at a point in space. And then we can use that to figure out the energy. Uh, potential. Uh, and one thing I should point out right here from the start is that the, the physicists did uh, a kind of a very poor job of choosing terms when they invented this part of physics. So when they came up with this concept, U, they decided to call it the electrical potential energy. And then when it came time that they had to come up with a name for this concept, I guess they, they dug deep into the, the depths of their creativity, and the best they could come up with is electric potential. Well, the reason I think this is a very bad name is because it sounds so similar to this one that it's easy to get these two concepts confused. So over and over in the course, people tend to not realize that the potential and the potential energy are two different things. Yeah. Oftentimes, people don't even use the word electric, because we know we're talking about electric. So oftentimes, people would just call this the potential, and they would call this the potential energy. So the key is, you've got to watch for the word energy. Yeah. If we say potential energy, we mean U. But if we just say potential, we mean V, which is not the same thing, mm -hmm. any more than field and force are the same things. Um, we know what are the units for electrical potential energy? Our joules. Because they're energy. That's right. Now, what are the units for electrical potential? Well, there's a special name for this, which is volts, which is maybe where this symbol V comes from. But we have to know what a volt is. And it turns out that a volt is joules per coulomb. So I've been stressing today how important it is to know the, uh, the units for electrical field. Well, we also really have to know the units for volts. And this is, again, one of the biggest mistakes students make in this course. They never learn what a volt is, and then they never get any, any, any intuition for what it means. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, and you should be able to see the, uh, the analogy here. Force is in newtons, and feel is in newtons per coulomb. Mm -hmm. Well, energy is in joules, and potential is in joules per coulomb. So in both cases, we just take the, the kind of basic unit and divide by coulombs. And knowing these units helps us to understand what the potential means. For example, suppose that at this point in space, the electrical potential is 0.7 joules per coulomb. Well, what does that tell us about this point in space? Um, How can we interpret that unit of joules per coulomb using some of the, the techniques we've seen earlier when we were working together? Good. That, that actually is quite good. Very good. So you're using the trick of putting the number one down here. This tells us that if we put a positive one Coulomb test charge here, it would have a potential energy of seven joules. That's the most straightforward way to think about it without thinking about work, because we know the potential determines the energy. So if we put a positive one Coulomb charge here, it would have an energy of positive seven joules. That doesn't mean there really is a one Coulomb charge here. This is just hypothetical. But you can see that this should be really quite useful. Suppose that I put a two Coulomb charge here. What would its energy be? Uh, 14 joules. That's right. So even if you're not putting a one Coulomb charge here, it's very useful to know what this is because um, it allows you to quickly figure out the energy. That should, again, remind you of our interpretation of electrical field. 
Suppose that the electrical field here is 8 newtons per coulomb. What does that actually tell you about this point in space? Um, for one coulomb charge, um, it feels, or as the test charge, it feels 8 newtons. Right. It tells us that if we put a 1 coulomb charge at this point, it would feel an 8 newton force. Mm -hmm. Feel determines force. Whereas this tells us that if we put a 1 coulomb test charge here, it would have an energy of positive 7 joules, potential determined joules. So it's important to see the analogy between potential and energy and field and force. Mm -hmm. These are both hypothetical. These just tell us about points in space uh, where there may or may not be actually any charges. But if there is a charge, they make it easy to figure out what the energy or the force is for that charge. So let's actually get a formula for that. Suppose that over here I put a positive 3 coulomb charge. Well, what would be its energy? Um, yeah. I put a 3 coulomb charge at this point that has a potential of 7 joules per coulomb. It would be 21 joules. That's right. If 1 coulomb gets 7 joules, 2 coulombs would get 14 joules, or 3 coulombs would get 21, where you can do it by unit analysis. You would multiply them like this to get 21 joules. So we just worked out the formula that relates energy and potential. We just saw that the energy is equal to the potential times the test charge. So that formula would go over here. And that should remind you of the formula that related force and field. Again, um, if we, uh, since these are both per coulomb, if you multiply by the number of coulombs, you get the more basic concept of energy or force. One difference, again, though, is that when we used this formula, we were just focusing on magnitudes. Whereas here, I'm not putting in any dots to indicate that we should actually put in the signs. So this tells us how to figure out the energy of a test charge. And I don't need to bother telling you how to figure out the direction, because this isn't a vector. So we don't need to figure out directions here, just the actual quantities. Let's do another example. If this point has a potential of positive 7 joules per coulomb, and I put a positive 5 coulomb test charge here, what would its energy be? Positive or negative? Positive. Good. What does that tell you about this charge? Well, it tells us that it would take 35 joules of work to move the test charge from infinity to this point. So another way you could think of this is this is telling us um, it would take 7 joules of work to move a 1 coulomb charge from infinity to here. That's another way to interpret the potential. How much work would it take to move a 1 coulomb charge from infinity to this point? Mm -hmm. Or if I put the charge here, ah, let's see, no, that's good enough. Now let's say that at this point in space, I put a negative 4 Coulomb charge. What would its energy be? A negative 28 joules. Right, V times Q, 7 times 4, but we include the charges. What's the significance of this being negative? Well, it just means that the charge would rather be here than at infinity, if infinity is our zero point. Notice that when we change the test charge, that doesn't change the potential at this point in space. The potential is just a characteristic of the space. Changing the charge changes the energy, but it doesn't change the potential. Mm 